Good day, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we are speaking on the difference in being religious and being born again. So before I start today, I'm going to stop and have a word of prayer, and then we're going to continue. Dear Lord, right now, Father, as I pray, I pray, Lord, that you will just go before me and let anything that you need to say, Lord, come through me, Lord, and speak to the people listening, Lord, and that they will have a better understanding, Lord, of what the difference is between being religious and being born again. And I pray, Father, that you'll use me right now in this time, Lord, to reach others for your name's sake, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for me, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you're about to pour out on all the people watching as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the difference in being religious and being born again, there are two big differences. So we're going to touch on first being religious. So being religious is continually going to a church on a Sunday every week, possibly never missing a church service and believing that you're much better than any sinners in the world. It's like yourself. You're focused on yourself. You're not really concerned about a relationship with God. You're just focused on you. Jesus didn't exclude anybody. He died for the sick, not the whole. He died for the drug addict, the homeless, the drunk, and the prostitute. Being religious is more about look at me, look at me type of attitude, which, uh, which does not please God. It's an attitude of self. Look at me, look at me. It's all about me. It's nothing else in the world. Nothing else matters. It's look at me kind of attitude. So being religious usually shows as we don't have any mercy, we're not forgiving or kind, or we're, full, we're not full of love. We need to surrender to God in order to do these things. So again, you're too full of yourself and you're too full of yourself to be able to help somebody else, if that makes sense. You're just all focused on yourself, being religious. So we need to lose having a judgmental attitude towards others, technically. So with a judgmental attitude towards others, we need to lose that attitude because that holds us back from being closer to God, and that's not good. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, Jesus warns us not to judge. Do not judge or you too will be judged. So you want to refrain from judging other people. Jesus didn't die on the cross for division or religion. He died on the cross for us to have a personal relationship and more in-depth personal relationship with him. James 1, 26 and 27 says, If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Verse 27, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So instead of being judgmental and condemning others because they're poor and needy or they need help, etc., we should focus on doing things to help people instead, instead of condemning people. So being born again is to die to our own fleshly desires and take up our cross and follow Jesus. God adopts us as that we are born again and are his children. In 2 Timothy 2 and 12, if we endure, we will also reign with him. So we have to keep the faith and keep going and we will see Jesus when we pass. Romans 8 and 1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So again, when you're born again, there's no condemnation. I'll get to that in a minute, a little bit more detail. So we are to be bold, confident, fearless, powerful in Christ. In Philippians 4 and 13, it says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So again, as I've said in other videos, um, I know for myself, everything that I do, I my strength comes from God. And we are to lean, we're to lean on the Lord for he is the one that gives us strength. In storms, we realize more than ever that number one, the storm will not last forever, and also that God wants me to grow and learn in a storm or storms. Storms build confidence, character, strength, courage, etc. So being religious is a fleshly, selfish, self self-absorbed type of lifestyle, and with being religious comes condemnation. Like you're always worried about, you know, 
um, I wonder what do other people think of me? Um, am I good enough to fit in? Do I deserve this or do I deserve that? Being born again is dying to the flesh and knowing that you are made whole when you are made right within God, when you accept Christ into your life. When we are made right with God, you no longer feel insecure, bitter, resentful, condemned. When you're religious and a religious, a religious person is just going to church, going to church and it's just for show, they're walking in the flesh, like I said, like, you know, they're not confident, they're not... It's just about, it's more for show than it is for anything else, really. So being born again is dying to the flesh and knowing that you are made whole when you are made right within God, when we accept Christ into our lives. When you are made right with God, you no longer feel insecure, bitter, resentful, or condemned. Rather, you feel whole, complete, secure, loved, you're confident, you're happy, you're hopeful, you're joyful, you have so much peace, you're full of grace, mercy, compassion towards others, etc. When surrendering your life to God, you want to desire and to please your Lord and Savior. You understand that the things that please God you desire to do, and you also know that anything that's unpleasing to God, you have no desire no more to take part of. Like when a person is religious, they just go about doing their own things, coming and going as they feel, what they feel for themselves. But when you're born again and you accept Christ into your life, you realize, and once you get into the word, you realize that the things that pleases God, that's what you want to do more of because you know that that pleases your heavenly father. But when we're not, um, but when we... But when we have yet to accept Christ into our lives, we walk in more selfishness and, you know, we have more pity parties. And pity parties, by the way, is a form of idolatry. Um, but like everything is like, and you're, you're more greedy and you're more, you're wanting to fill your own fleshly desires. Um, but when you're born again in Christ, it's you that was nailed to the cross with Christ and when you get into the word more and you realize and, and you soak up the word more, and I'm when I'm saying the word, I mean the Bible, you get to realize very quickly that the things that pleases God is helping other people. It's walking in mercy. It's walking in grace. You're more confident. You don't care about what anybody has to say about you. That don't bother you anymore because you feel secure. You feel whole in Christ. And when you feel whole and secure and joyful and peaceful and you're full of happiness and mercy. You just, you're just happy. You wake up every morning with the intent and the motive that you want to do things that are pleasing unto God. That's what I have to say about that. And in Galatians 5, 17 and 18, it says in the Bible, For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. Verse 18, But if you are led by the Spirit, which is the Lord, you are not under law. Law is religious. It's like, number one, I feel I have to do it. I have to do it. Um, going to church. Um, and grace is being born again. It's like you're filled with God's Spirit, that same Spirit that dwells in Christ, dwells in us. And when you have that same spirit, you just want to live pleasing unto the Lord. So with this all being said, there is a big difference in being religious and being born again. Religious is all about the fleshly desires, the carnal desires. Look at me. Look at me. I'm happy. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, 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 I'm. Every time you hear somebody say I'm most of the times, it's I'm like all about me. Look at me. Look at me. When you're in Christ and you die to the flesh, the flesh has died on the cross with Christ because he died on the cross to save us from our sins. We're all born in sin. Those fleshly carnal desires, they eventually leave. They don't leave right away because 
every day when you're walking with Christ is a new day and we're all trying to get closer to God. We're all trying to be the best we can be in God. So we're all a work in progress. But as we live and we grow and we continue to get older in Christ, we learn that we want to do things that are pleasing unto God. We don't we don't no longer want to sit back and have a self pity party. Look at me, look at me, oh poor me, poor me, things are going my way. If anybody could be um on medication um, and have a lot of days down, I am definitely a candidate for somebody to just sit back and be like, poor me, poor me, poor me. But in Christ, again, the things, like I've said to you guys in my other videos, the things, again, that sometimes would possibly hold me back before I had my encounter with the Lord and being born again, would be like I've went through a lot of things in my past and those things could hold me captive if I let my mind and if I let myself take over. I'd be like, you know, poor me, poor me. I can't get out of bed. I can't get out of bed. And with all due respect to anybody that needs help out there, you go right ahead and get your help. That's all good. But what I'm saying is when you trust the Lord completely every single day and you're born again and you're filled with his spirit, we tend to lean on him and we trust him and all the things that in our in our our lives that sometimes don't make sense to our flesh we just surrender it to God and we say here Lord here's this problem here's this problem here's this one here's this one I can't do any of it it's all your problems so I know I can trust you Lord to either give me strength and courage to get through it or in your time Lord you're gonna make all things well and when we focus on that and we realize that we can go about our days and we can be happier. We can be a lot more at peace. We can be so much more joyful. It's not that we don't care. It's the fact that we just put it all over on God and then we expect God to move mountains when he's ready. And when he's ready, big and mighty and marvelous things will come to you. And he's not going to grant you our heart. He's not going to grant us our heart's desires. If he don't think the time is right, if he don't think we're, we have enough character to deal with it, he's trying to do so much work in us every day. And we always have to go back and lean on him. Every morning we wake up, we have to surrender ourselves and say, Lord, here I am. I'm your vessel. Use me. Use me for your glory. It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's not about what I work at. It's not about nothing about me. It's all about you. And I am to be used for your glory. So with saying that, I hope you all have a marvelous day. And that is the difference between being religious and being born again. There is so much more fulfillment. There is so much more excitement. There is so much more there's so much more to life when you're born again and you know that there's a God that he wants the best for you and that he wants you to grow in him and trust in him and have faith in him. There's so much more with being born again. And that is that is the conclusion of this um, topic today. The difference in being religious and being born again. So until next time, you guys, take care. Stay blessed. Stay beautiful. Love you all. And we'll see you next time.